Hello and welcome to this Swift and Xcode tutorial. I'm Cal and today's tutorial we're going to be doing some validation on a form. More specifically we're going to be doing validation on text fields. We're going to be validating our email, password as well as a phone number just as an example. And so for the email we're going to make sure that it's the correct sort of syntax so that you've got uh, some strings, an at symbol, some more strings, a full stop and then some more strings. For the password we're going to make sure that it's at least a certain length and that it contains at least one uppercase and lowercase character as well as containing a digit. And for the phone number we're going to make sure that it's all digits and that it's the correct length. Cool, so let's get started. So as always, creating a new Swift and Xcode project, iOS app, I'm just going to call this text field validation Swift, selecting storyboard and Swift, we're going to hit next and create, and then we're going to head into our main storyboard, we're going to drag in our text field, give it some constraints, so we're going to say top space, center horizontally and equal width, and then we're going to go in and modify the proportional width to be 0.8, so we're saying that the text field is going to be 80% of the screen's width, and then we're going to drag in our label, so this is going to be for our error message, so this is just going to set below our text field, so we're just going to say vertical spacing as well as leading, we're going to change the constant to be 10, so it's sitting 10 below our text field. And then we're going to go in and modify the color, changing that to red and changing the text to required. If you hold down command and then click on our label as well as our text field, we can select both at the same time, command C and command V to copy and paste that down two more times. And they'll actually remember their constraints to one another, but we do have to put in the constraints to the safe area. So we're just actually gonna say from our middle text field, we're gonna give it the constraints, vertical spacing as well as equal widths and center horizontally off our top. And then the same thing for our third one off our second. So next we're going to drag in a button. I'm just going to choose this filled button and I'm just going to change it to submit. We're just going to sit that off our bottom text field and then we're going to head in to each of our text fields and just give them a placeholder. So the top one's going to be for our email and then the next one's going to be a password and then the third one's going to be our phone number. And while we've got our phone number selected, we're going to go in and change the keyboard type to be this phone pad. So that just means that the software keyboard that pops up will be of only containing digits. Cool, so I think we're ready to create some outlets. So I'm just going to open up the assistant editor I'm going to right click and drag and create an outlet for our email text field, as well as one for our password text field, and one more for our phone number text field. We're going to create an outlet for each of our error messages, calling the first one email error, and then we're going to do one for password error and as well for the phone error. And then we're going to create an outlet for our submit button, just calling it submit button. Below our view did load, we're going to create an action. So just saying submit action. And then we're also going to create an action, but this action is going to be on the event editing changed. And we're going to create that for each one of our text fields. So basically whenever we enter one character, it's going to call this function. So we're going to create that for our email, password, as well as our phone number, because we're going to do validation on every character that gets entered. So I think that's looking good. We're going to close off the assistant editor now and head into our main view controller. Just do a quick little bit of tidying up. We're going to create a function calling it reset form. And here we're just going to say submit button enabled is equal to false. We're going to call that from our view did load. And we're also going to say our email error is hidden is equal to false, as well as our phone error and our password. So we're basically saying that we want the required message to be there. We're going to set it all to be required. And then we're going to set our text field text back to empty. And we're going to do that for our password as well as our phone. And now in our submit action, we're going to reset our form. And this is where you create your user or whatever, because at this point you're going to assume that you've got a valid form. We're going to start with the easiest one first, which I think is probably our phone number. We're going to say if let phone number is equal to our phone text field text. And then we're going to say if let again inside here saying error message is equal to our invalid phone number function, which we haven't actually created yet. So we're going to create that now. So we're just going to create a function calling it invalid phone number. So this is going to receive the value of whatever the users put in via a string, and it's going to return an optional string. We're going to return nil at the bottom, meaning that we haven't found an error. So if we've found an error, we're going to set our phone error text equal to our error message, and we're going to make sure that it's not hidden. Otherwise, we must have found nil, and therefore we're going to set our phone error hidden equal to true. Cool, so now in our invalid phone number, we're just going to say if value count is not equal to 10. So if our phone number doesn't have 10 digits, then we're going to return an error message of phone number must be 10 digits. And then above that, we're going to check to see that all of the digits entered are in fact digits and not any other characters. We're going to say set is equal to character set characters in value, just giving it our value, which is our password. If not character set decimal digits is superset of our set, then we are going to return the error message of phone number must contain only digits. Cool, so let's build and run this. You can see once I add a few characters, it's saying it's not 10 characters. If I add in a character that's not a digit, it's saying phone number must contain only digits. So yeah, that all seems to be working pretty good. Before we fully finish our phone number validation, we're just going to create a function calling it check for valid form. We're going to enable the submit button if every part of our form is valid. So we're going to say if our email error is hidden 
and our password error is hidden and our phone error is hidden, meaning that there are no error messages on our view controller. Then we're gonna say our submit button is enabled is equal to true. Otherwise, we're gonna set our submit button enabled equal to false. And we're actually gonna call this check for valid form from each of our changed listeners. So email and password change, we're gonna paste that in there. Cool, so let's work on our email change listener now. We're gonna say if let email is equal to email text field dot text. We're gonna copy out our error message code and instead of checking for an invalid phone number, we're checking for an invalid email and obviously just passing through our email and just changing the error to our email error. And then we're gonna create that function. So invalid email address, scroll down and copy and paste what we receive as well as what we return. So receiving a string and returning an optional string. We're gonna return nil at the bottom, meaning that there was no error or well, there is no error if we get to this point we're just going to say let regular expression equal to and i'm not going to type this out so i've just pasted this in but basically what we're doing is we're looking for some characters an at symbol some more characters a full stop and then some more characters so this isn't perfect it's obviously not checking to see that the email actually exists it's just saying that it's the correct email format cool so with our regular expression we're just going to say let predicate equal to ns predicate our format is going to be self matches percentage sign as well as at and then pass it through our regular expression if our predicate evaluate with our value, we're gonna return invalid email address. So it needs to be not. So if we don't find invalid email address. Cool, so let's build and run this. And you can see that when I put in an invalid email address, uh, the error message has gone away. So let's do our final validation, which is for our password. Again, very similar. We're gonna copy and paste down and just changing the error messages as well as I'm gonna create a function calling it invalid password. And that's gonna receive our password. We're gonna copy paste our invalid email address and just changing that to invalid password and pass it through our password. Now below our invalid password, we're gonna create another function. We're gonna call it contains digits and this one's gonna return Boolean. So it's gonna receive a string and return a Boolean. And we're gonna put a regular expression in here. This is gonna be a little bit shorter and a little bit simpler. So our regular expression, we're just gonna return our predicate evaluate. And it's probably a little bit confusing the way I've copy and pasted this around, but basically our contains digit is gonna be this full stop, an asterisk, and then zero to nine, and then another full stop and an asterisk. And so what we're doing with this contains digit function is we're looking through our password and checking to see if it's got a digit in it. And if it doesn't have a digit, we're gonna give the error message of your password must contain at least one digit. Otherwise, we're gonna continue on. And we just need to put in a plus sign after our zero to nine. Cool, so above where we check to see if our password contains at least one digit, we're gonna do something similar to what we did with our phone number, where we're gonna say our string length must be at least eight characters and then just say if our password is less than eight characters we're going to say password must be at least eight characters and then we're going to copy and paste down our contains digit function just changing it to contains lowercase so we're going to check to see if our password contains a lowercase character just changing the error message to be the applicable one we're going to copy and paste our contains digit just changing that to contains lowercase our regular expression, all we have to do is change the zero and nine to a lowercase a and z. And we're gonna do the same thing for our uppercase, just changing the a and z to an uppercase. And then we're gonna copy and paste down that function one more time and just changing the error message to be the appropriate error message. Cool, so let's build and run this one final time. And we're gonna start with our email. We're just gonna put in a valid email address and then we're gonna put in a password. You can see it's saying it must be at least eight characters. It must contain at least one digit one uppercase character, and then I'm gonna delete all the characters and only put in uppercase characters, and you can see that it's saying we need a lowercase character. And then I'll put in our phone number, the form has become valid, and now we can submit, and that just resets our form. So I hope you learned something from how to validate uh, text fields in Swift and Xcode, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, cheers.